my name is Kate and I'm a high school math teacher in the middle of my 17th year of teaching. I thought that I would take you guys along for a day in my life. Today is a very different day. Um, it is Monday, October 23rd and every Monday we have a um, late start for our kids. Our kids start an hour late and so we can have this is our time to have PLC meetings and so that's the one thing that we have. So that's not different. I know I've done one of these day in my life before but the other thing that's different is that we also have parent-teacher conferences. So we're, we've got school from 8.05 or I guess we have to be here from 8.10 to 4.10 and then parent conferences start at, um, at 4.35 and go until 7.45. So I thought that I would take you guys along for a day in my life. So it is 8.25. Thankfully, our PLC meeting has been canceled today to give us a little bit of extra time to get ready for our parent conferences. So I'm going to get the copies that I need for today and tomorrow. And then I'm just going to get a few things ready for the start of the day. I know I've talked about this in other blogs, but I thought I'd point it out again. So when my students come in, I have this slide up and the goal is for the kids to read this and do what it's asked. So I have the do now stuff that they need to do. And then we're big on I can statements in our district. And then I do have our today. So the I can and the today really are the same. Um, but you know, if we have a quiz, if we have a test, if we have projects, I'll also put those things. Um, and then if there are things that I need to remind them or to remember to talk about, I'll also put that in the today. And then there's the meme of the day. I have fun with those. Some of my students really enjoy them as well. And then over here, we have the upcoming uh, due dates. That's when I typically list the tests and the quizzes for my students. Figure I flip you around. So I have students that don't come in or when they come in they don't read the board and you know five minutes into class when I'm like okay you know we're going to be using this they're like oh I don't have that or whatever the excuse is and then I'm waiting another five minutes for the kids to pull it out of their bag or to go grab, a, grab it from the absent in or their iPad's dead so now they have to charge it you know after it should have been plugged in and being charged for the most of the class so I think what I'm going to start doing is just random like participation point days where it's things that are a little bit more specific than just having a pencil on your desk. Um, I do in geometry specifically, I give them what I call toolkits and toolkits are just a yellow piece of paper that has most of the like the most important things that we're doing organized on there. And those are really easy to see because they're on yellow paper. So maybe I'll, I'm going to start giving them random. Yep, I see that you have it, you have it. Oh, you don't. So, you know, giving them just a one or a zero for the day for that. Maybe that'll encourage them to read that. I saw me working on grading projects that honestly should have been graded before my surgery, but you know, priorities. My students do a project at the end of each unit for geometry, which is a lot of fun because it's a way for them to, for the most part, artistically show the skills and the concepts that they learned in each of the units and it's a lot of fun to do. It does take up a lot of time. Most of the projects take two class periods if not two and a half class periods so they do take a while and then grading them takes forever. So the projects that they're doing, let me grab one. So this is the one that I just graded. So they had to create a life-size body of one of their teammates using the five different shapes that we worked on at this unit and finding the area of those. So Here's the one that they did, and they had to they put their name on the front as well, so I've got to be careful not to show their names. So they had to um, label the dimensions, they had to uh, find the area, they were also supposed to write the area formula, which they did on some of them, 
find the area, and then they had to find the total area of the entire body, which this group did not do. Um, but I'm just going through and I'm grading the rest of those. So I have about between seven and eight teams in each of my four classes. So it does take a little bit of time to grade these. So that's what I've been working on, trying to get these done, trying to get these hung up so that I can get them out of my room. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and go over the answers to the homework. So if you did the homework, take it out. Homework 3.5. If you did not do the homework, you should not be grading the answers. So please make sure that the only people that are grading the homework are those of you guys that did the homework. Uh, number nine is where we're starting. So the answer you should have, they are similar by side, side, side similarity. So you need to make sure that when you write that, you have this similarity symbol. If you don't, it's not correct. So please make sure you guys include that. The other part of what you need is triangle S, T, W is similar to triangle A, D, E. Number 10, they are similar by angle, angle similarity. And we have triangle H, C, B is similar to triangle H, I, G. When we do a flow chart, it's going to be set up very similar to this idea right here. Okay? The top ovals that we have, we may not have three, we may only have two, we may have five, we may have ten. Okay? But those top ovals are our facts. The bottom oval is the thing that we're trying to prove or our conclusion. So because of these facts, I know that this is true. Okay. They're always going to follow this order. The information that goes in the facts, we've already been doing that. So if we look at our classwork that we did on Friday, okay. so looking at this, these right here, those are all of our facts. I know that that's one side ratio, that's one side ratio, I've got my angles being congruent. So these are all the facts. So we've been practicing listing all those facts, which is why when we did this, every time we wrote down everything we knew, because it's gonna help us do our flow chart. This right here, that's my conclusion. Because of all of these facts, I know that my triangles are congruent to each other, okay? So all the information that we did when we did our classwork on Friday, we're using all of that, but now rather than just having it randomly throughout our paper, we're going to have it very organized. Okay, so that's our goal for today. So looking at our first problem, how do you think we might show that these triangles are similar to each other? Which one of our similarity conjectures? Side, side, side. Why side, side, side? Yeah, all of our sides have a number. So side, side, side is the one that makes the most sense. So if we're going to do side, 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 how many facts do you think we're going to have? Three, right? Side, side, side. I'm going to have three different facts because I'm going to have three different ratios. So I know that I'm going to have one fact right here. Next to it, I'm going to put another one. And next to it, I'm going to put a third one. Okay, so it's important that we fit all three of them next to each other like this. So it may help the first time to first draw your ovals. And then you'll kind of get an idea of how they're going to fit. Okay, so remember when we're talking about side, side, side. Smallest side on this triangle over the smallest side on this triangle, right? So what's the smallest side on our smaller triangle? 17. So I know I'm going to have 17 over what number? 37.4. So one of my ovals is going to have 17 over 37.4. And then we're going to change that to a decimal, just like we did before. We're not changing the type of math. We're just changing how we write and how we organize it. So what is 17 divided by 37.4? Good, 0 0.454. Right, same math that we would have done before. The only difference is now we're just putting it in an oval. Is this enough for our triangles to be similar? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw underneath it, we're going to draw an oval. So I'm going to start out by telling you we're going to use triangle S, T, R, similar to triangle. So if we start S, T, 
R, I want you guys to come up with the other three letters. Okay, so if we went S, T, R, so I went from S to T, that's going along, let's see, the 55, that's my biggest side. All right, so I went along my biggest side first. So on my other triangle, what's the biggest side? That 25, that PQ. So I know I have to do this. And then I went STR, so I went across my smallest side. So I went from my biggest side to my smallest side. So what's my smallest side? Mm, that's an angle, 17. So I need to go to those two sides. So I went from my biggest side to my smallest side. So I went, what's the order of that one gonna be? P, Q, N, good. So triangle P, Q, N. Okay, angle relationships do not go in an oval. They're gonna go in the, if we think of this as like a box, it's gonna go in the bottom right-hand corner outside, not inside. So why are these two triangles similar to each other? We said it was side, side, side. So down here, outside of our oval, we're gonna put side, side, side similarity. Now, based on what my picture looks like and what I said a flow chart kind of looks like, what am I missing? From here, that's not over there yet. The arrows, good. So we need our arrows. Our arrows are just showing us how our flow chart moves. So I know that all three of these are helping me come up with that conclusion. Okay, so we need our arrows. And that's it. That's our flow chart. So really it's everything that we've already done. We're just organizing it differently now. So because it's angle angle, how many of these facts do you think we're gonna have going across the top? Two, right? Because I need one for one pair of angles, one for the other. So if it only has two letters in the name, we're only gonna need two facts. So what I want you guys to do is see if you can come up with the two pairs of angles. So again, this part is review. So see if you guys can come up with the two pairs of angles that we have in number two. And if it helps, go back and look at our classwork that we did on Friday. Look at classwork, what was that one? 3.5, okay. It's lunchtime, finally, I'm starving. So I had my plan period and then both of my geometry classes. So now I am going to eat lunch. So what do teachers have for lunch? Well, a lot of times I don't eat lunch because I'm just too busy working, but I know with parent conferences, I need to eat. So I've got leftovers, I've got meatloaf, mac and cheese, and mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat this while i not gonna grade. I'm gonna watch YouTube. So I will talk to you guys in a little bit. I do a quick update so it's about 6 45 and conferences started at 4 30 and I have seen a total of five um so I have to leave at seven so I am not sure I'm gonna see anybody else today so I know I didn't get a lot of clips it was a very crazy day uh, but I hope this gave you guys a glimpse into what a day in my life looks like I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey of becoming or of being a high school math teacher, please subscribe. I post videos every Friday. So if you are interested, click the notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload my newest video. I'll talk to you later. Bye.